from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul writes, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are on the road to destruction. For the God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not have faith so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that is revealed as Christ's glory. For Jesus Christ is the image of God. We do not preach ourselves. Instead, we pe preach about Jesus Christ as Lord, and we describe ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. God said that light should shine out of the darkness. He is the same one who shone brightly in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we ask you to inspire us together as listeners and thinkers so that we may hear a word of encouragement and instruction from you. We ask this in Christ's name. Do you have any dreams? It's almost a silly question, isn't it? Because all of us, all of us have dreams. I'm persuaded that as long as we are breathing in and breathing out, we all have the power of our dreams to motivate us to do more or be more or pray more or give more. We all have personal dreams. We have family dreams. We have dreams for our children or our grandchildren. We have professional dreams. We have financial security dreams. We have health dreams. We also have dreams for our community, our nation, our world, and our church. Well, since all of us have dreams, we can identify with that magnificent speech, the I Have a Dream speech of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., that was delivered on August 28, 1963. It's one of the greatest motivational speeches that has ever been crafted and delivered. But the dreams of Dr. King did not die with the dreamer. Some of his dreams have been realized. Some of his dreams continue to be a catalyst for growth and change, while others, even after these 52 years, are still a long, long way from achieving. That's the significance of big and bold and beautiful dreams. I believe that it is our dreams that become the inspiration that keep us focused and moving forward in a positive direction. Dreams are a call from the future that help us to chart our course in living the one life that we have been given to live as a gift from God. Probably few of us read the letters of the Apostle Paul to the first century churches as being letters from a dreamer. Paul was not only a good pastor and teacher, he was a visionary, a visionary leader that attempted to cast a vision for the young Christians to make a positive difference in their world. In all of Paul's letters, he was teaching the followers of Jesus to be faithful in living their faith convictions. He was trying to help them to understand that as individual Christians, we have a greater influence 
when we are united together with other Christians in a community of faith called the church. The preeminent dream for Paul was that the church would be a positive influence in the community where they existed. For Paul, that urban church at Corinth proved to be his most challenging congregation. He wrote firmly to them. He wrote lovingly. When we read 1 Corinthians, we see that Paul was primarily a problem solver, for he moved from one hot-button issue to another, working his way through the challenges of that community of faith. As Paul dealt honestly and systematically with each challenge, he kept the dream of developing a congregation that would function as a beacon of light in their city. Corinth, you may realize, was a cosmopolitan center, but they had a culture of idolatry and immorality and hedonism, unlike any church that Paul dealt with. He taught those Corinthian Christians to have a positive influence for Christ in their city. He taught that the love, the love of God, was the most fundamental message of all. He taught that love from God to God's people was the example of the love that we needed to demonstrate between Christian believers. Paul taught them that love was the highest ethic because we needed, Paul said, to welcome and accept all people and then help them grow in their faith. Paul had a dream that the Corinthian Christians would influence their city. So in that first letter, he not only was a vision caster, he was a teacher and a conflict manager and a motivator. But then in his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul was more of a healer. He took the mask off. He wanted them to see who he was and the love and the care that he had for them. And so he bore his soul to the people. He let them know the motivation for his dream. In Christ, Paul wrote, we are able to see the very image of God. And by developing faith in Jesus Christ, the people would be able to enjoy the fullness of life in the light of God. And then through that light, that light that shines brightly in each person, then the entire community is lit up with the light of Christ. That's the message of the church to the world, past, present, and future. The church of Jesus Christ is to function as a beacon of light. Christians are to function as the light of Christ in the world. We are to serve as ambassadors of good news in our community. That was Paul's dream. It was his dream that he taught to all the churches in the first century. It was the dream that caught fire in that early church. It was the same dream that has caught fire in people through the centuries like St. Francis, St. Augustine, Martin Luther, John and Charles Wesley, Fanny Crosby, D.L. Moody, and Dr. King. All of them. All of them plus many, many, many other Christian leaders had dreams that were bigger than the dreamer. They had dreams that were rooted and grounded in their faith. And the effect of their dreams 
transform the communities for Christ. Developing and pursuing a dream has always been a vital part of the community of faith. The other day, I was looking for something in my files. I didn't find what I was looking for. Instead, I found something that was perhaps more timely and more appropriate to this particular week and this particular Sunday. I found a file that was titled, I Have a Dream. I had forgotten it. I had forgotten that back in 1996, when I was a new pastor in a new congregation where we were serving, I developed a dream list that I shared with the congregation. It was bold. It was a set of statements that pushed that congregation just a little. But in that file, I also found a second edition. It was a, for a congregation that I served nearly a decade later. And here I am, serving nearly 20 years later, and I was amazed at how similar that list of dreams that I developed in 96 is still applicable for us in 2015. So I looked at that list of dreams and I rewrote them again for this congregation, especially in light of the conversations that we have had over this last month as a congregation. You have been part of conversations called Envisioning Our Future. So much of what I'm going to share with you has come from you. It's a shared vision that I think we have. I have a dream that our congregation will have a great spiritual awakening where the fire of the Spirit is ignited among us and people are transformed by the power of Christ. I have a dream that our congregation will be genuinely open and welcoming to all people, regardless of theological persuasion, race, gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation. I have that dream. I have a dream that we will be known for our diversity and that our diversity will be identified as one of our greatest strengths and that even if we should disagree with one another, we'll stay in relationship and work it through. I have a dream that the warmth and friendliness of our hospitality will not only enrich the fellowship of the faithful, but will extend a generous welcome to people who are lonely and marginalized and wounded and broken. I have a dream that our congregation will be known throughout our city as a center for worship, vibrant worship, prayer and healing where excellence is always celebrated and we honor God. I have a dream that all of God's children of every age and stage will enjoy an environment where relationships are valued deeply as a catalyst for growing in our faith. I have a dream that together we will hear the call of God and discover our individual spiritual gifts, and then invest our gifts for doing the work of ministry. I have a dream 
that we will grow to understand that the greatest asset of our congregation is people. I have a dream that we will be creative and responsive to the needs of people as we engage in our ministries of social justice and peacemaking and outreach in our community. I have a dream that we will never have a money problem or ever need to ask for money because we've caught a vision of what it means to be people who are committed to generosity and tithing. I have a dream that our relevancy and our contagious faith will expand our ministry so that God will add to our number daily, just as was known in that first century church on the day of Pentecost. That's the kind of dreams I have. You have some dreams too. But the truth is, none of us can accomplish those dreams alone. We need each other. That's why the church is so important on the journey of faith. We need the Spirit to work in us and among us to refine our dreams for the greater good of building the kingdom of God. T.S. Eliot wrote, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far they can go. William James wrote, Act as if what you do makes a difference, because it does. Mother Teresa wrote, The least of my brethren are the hungry and the lonely, not only for food, but for the word of God. The thirsty are not only thirsty for water, they are thirsty for knowledge and peace and truth and justice and love. And St. Francis wrote, Start by doing what's necessary. Then do what's possible. And before you know it, you're doing the impossible. So dream big, my friends. Dream big. Everybody has a dream. We all do. And never forget, never forget, God is the source of every dream. Thanks be to God. Amen. It always puzzles me how Methodists, when they come to church, they think they need to sit on their hands. You don't need to do that here. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad you were here today. May God inspire you to dream. Dream big dreams because God is the source of those dreams. As we move now into the Lenten season, it's a time of not only self-examination and introspection, it's a time of dreaming. Because in those dreams come all sorts of resurrection. So may God go with you, not only in this day, but in all the days ahead. Amen.